Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. I'm your host, Jared Moon. The Garage Gym Athlete Podcast is a result of my desire to build better humans, unequivocal coaches, and autonomous athletes. I've spent the last several years obsessing over program design, nutrition, and every other way you can optimize human performance. This podcast distills the latest scientific research with what I've learned and blends it with the not-so-scientific field of mental toughness. We are here to build you into a dangerously effective athlete. If you enjoy this podcast, you can find out more about our training at garagegymathlete.com. And if you want to pursue more into the field of coaching and programming, head to endof3fitness.com. Thanks for listening. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. Jared Moon here with Joe Courtney. What's up, Joe? Not much, man. What's going on? Not much. And we have Jeremy Puskas. That's How right. How's it going? I'm doing all right this morning. Yeah, man. Glad to have you here. So this is episode number two. And so we're going to get some updates and everything. But, you know, some people may have not heard your first episode. So if you guys do want to go listen to his first episode, you definitely can do that. Uh, but you know, still give us a, a quick introduction for anyone who maybe hasn't heard that or not familiar with you. Um, so, you know, the good stuff, what you do for a living, how you train, where you're from, all that. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm a middle school science teacher. I, uh, absolutely love it. I know it takes a, a certain kind of uh, person to, uh, to kind of have that kind of uh, patience and, uh, sarcasm to, uh, to work with middle schoolers. Uh, I guess I've been gifted in that way. Um, it's actually uh, my uh, science background is one of the things that kind of turned me on to the uh, EO3 podcast, uh, originally Better Humanology, and then into uh, Garage Gym Athlete ever before I was uh, a member. Um, been uh, working out in my garage for some time, slowly building it up, and uh, it wasn't until uh, I kind of made the jump uh, back in January and said, uh, okay, let's do this. So now I'm almost a whole year in, and I'm actually hoping uh, to see that uh, lifetime membership come up for uh, next uh Black Friday or better humanology or better human Friday. It's uh, there a lot, lot of terms around here. Uh, well, that's awesome, man. So there we're coming up on, we're recording this in December. Uh, so you're coming up on a year um, in January. Is that right? That is correct. That's awesome, man. So what has, you kind of took the full plunge as a garage gym athlete that you said you've been building slowly. So what's changed, you know, whether that's, mindset or actual equipment, you know, what, what, what have been the biggest changes of you, uh, training this way over the last year? A uh, little bit of mindset, a uh, little bit of equipment. So at the end of last podcast, you asked me, what are the, uh, you know, if you could have anything to add to your gym, what would it be? And, uh, I actually have added both of those items, uh, both, um, uh, safety, uh, bars for when I'm uh, squatting or uh, benching by myself out in the garage, particularly if it's uh, just me and my three-year-old running around. I definitely don't want to bail on a heavy back squat and that go rolling off somewhere where it might hurt him. And uh, also the uh, the weighted vest. I've uh, been doing a uh, – I uh, have really enjoyed that. was able to do uh, zone two Murph in the vest uh, under an hour. Uh, nice. That was close. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's cool, man. So how, how are you liking, uh, the vest? I like it. It's, uh, it's a special kind of, uh, of activity. Uh, I actually think I like it because it's, uh, a better weight distribution than just doing the ruck and, uh, last cycle of shred, uh, VD definitely had a, a lot of rucking in that <laughs> one. So I had to build a ruck sack cause I didn't have one of those. And... So what's been your path kind of on the, on the different, uh, tracks? So I started the year with Harder to Kill. Really enjoyed that. The uh, variety was amazing. I definitely saw my some really intensive gains uh, from just the basic strength stuff that I had been doing coming into this. Um, it, it was very helpful. Then I took, uh, went from there and said, oh, I think I'd kind of like a little bit more of that strength aspect because one of my goals for this year was to get uh, a 400 plus pound deadlift and uh, not many of my uh, running friends can are doing much lifting anyways. And I said, okay, if I can hit 400, that'd be, that'd be awesome. So I went for strength and I, I enjoyed strength programming. Um, definitely was best on my uh, just zone two work. 
but then uh, I didn't see quite the strength gains that I wanted. Uh, so I said, no, we'll, we'll give um, Shred a track. So I've been on Shred for two cycles now, or coming up to finish my second cycle of Shred. And uh, VD is definitely a, uh, a mastermind of, uh, of sorts. <clears throat> and I'm seeing a lot of, uh, lot of progress. I hit that 405 uh, at the end of last cycle. You know, it's really interesting just me knowing the difference between the tracks. That means your your body likes high volume, you know, uh, because that's that's what VD is exceptional at programming. Um, and it, it's it's also good for shred. Uh, but that's that's really interesting, man. That's something to, to keep in mind for yourself as well. Like if some people will get destroyed by it, you know what I mean? Like they high volume, they're out for a couple of days and uh, other people, their bodies like need that stimulus. So that's really um really cool that you're seeing progress there. And then going into, you know, this 2021, what are, what are your plans? Do you have like a track map that you're following, or at least, you know, what you're going to be on for the first, uh, first cycle? Well, I'm, I'm actually been debating upon that because now that I've hit my deadlift goal, uh, my, uh, back squat, I know could, uh, could use a little bit of work and, uh, so could my running. Um, I, uh, have been doing since our last podcast, I had only done one ultra um, other than back in 2012 and that one was, was my hardest workout, <clears throat> but now this, um, this year I've actually done three ultras and, uh, I can tell that, uh, while I can power through a lot where other people might uh, stop, I definitely need to work on my running endurance a little bit more again as well. So I've contemplated BCT since I would be a year in, if that's still an option, but, uh, shred i'm contemplating between the two because it seems there's also a lot of high volume on uh, bct and like you said i i seem to do pretty well on that yeah it's um i'm so glad i threw the word boring in there because me now being a full cycle into it it's that's pretty much the definition you know it's it's boring training but i i do enjoy it because uh the improvements i've seen in my running have been um you know pretty amazing not not so much just the mile time just like my zone two is getting better um i'm doing a lot of different things that uh like hardly elevate my heart rate compared to what they used to. like back in the the day i would say earlier this year if i were to do double unders my heart rate would just shoot up like super high if i'm doing consistent mm-hmm. double unders I, I was doing double unders for my warm-up yesterday and my just my heart rate wouldn't really get out of zone two and I was like, yeah. it's gotta be all the running. Maybe, maybe this running stuff is good for you. Who knows? Maybe, maybe there's a book about it somewhere. I don't know. I've been listening to uh, Cameron Haynes on uh, Joe Rogan recently. And that's all he's talking about. is just the vast amounts of running that he's doing like a marathon per day. And then he's lifting in the afternoon. So he's doing some kind of uh, variation of uh, concurrent training, but I don't think he knows that that maybe he does. I, I don't know. I'd be an interesting individual to uh, get your thoughts on, but um, just the amount of running volume that he does, how that helps him drop his heart rate very quickly in the middle of, uh, something like a hunt, which is very specialized compared to, to what we're up to. But yeah, you know. that's really cool, man. I'll have to check it out. So what other, you know, what are your goals rolling into this year? Do you have anything concrete? You, you hit a bunch of ultras this year. That's awesome. Um, are you going to do more of the same, um, or, you know, kind of what is that blend? It sounds like you have like a good blend of like strength and endurance goals most of the time. Yeah. So I'm hoping, uh, I'm not sure if I'll hit it by the end of this year, but that's, uh, that's something I'm going to be pushing for prior to, uh, or coming into this, this end of this cycle. I would love to try to hit a sub six minute mile. Um, I've been wanting that for a while. And, uh, you know, if I, if I don't hit it yet, then there's always next year. And that's something to keep me pushing. Um, and, uh, I've been contemplating uh, doing my first 50 mile run. So I've done several 50 Ks, but looking at a 50 miler, that's, uh, that just kind of seems just beyond a friend of mine invited me to come out and do a 100 miler. And I said, I know I'm not ready for that yet. Um, but it got me to thinking a couple of days later, you know, it just starts, it sticks in your head after a while. Somebody puts out oh, a challenge out there. Starts. And, yep. They're like, I, I can't believe it. I, I never would have thought that I would be one of those individuals to go out and run a hundred miles, but okay, maybe well, let me, let me think about it. The more I think about it, the more I say, okay, what kind of training will I need to do to be able to accomplish that task? How much 
time is that going to take me away from my family or how can I incorporate that into things I'm doing with my family? So, so that, those are some of them. Yeah. So uh, my, my three-year-old loves being out here with me. And um, that's one of the best things I think has been for us. I've seen such great goals from him. Um, we adopted him uh, from China back in uh, May of 2019. And he was, uh, we, we got him right at two years old, but he was almost a year and a year to year and a half behind physically, developmentally. And uh, he is uh, now doing preschool gymnastics and just loving that. And one of his favorite things is to come out and uh, work out with dad. So he's got these little two pound um, weights that he has over there and he uh, he'll bench press with them or he'll, he'll try to do curls. I had him doing curl and press with me the other day and he can't, he doesn't have the uh, quite the coordination coordination. Yeah. To be able to do jump rope yet, but he's got this little rope that he kind of swings around and he just kind of does this number with it and shakes back and forth and <laughs> says, jump rope, jump rope. And, uh, that's He's doing just, something. Yeah. Oh, that's great. I, I love spending time with him. So that's, uh, that's been phenomenal. Um, and just being able to see, particularly after the current, uh, health climate in America with so many people, uh, being, having to pull back because of the concern, uh, of the way that the virus might affect them. Um, I know that I'm not immune for sure. But being able to constantly focus on, am I eating healthier? Am I working out consistently? Am I getting enough sun? You know, working through those EO3 elements, I'm, I feel more confident to be able to, to go out. And this time last year, I felt, I felt sick. I mean, I, had, I, I still have seasonal allergies that I'm dealing with now, but I was just beat down. And I don't feel that as much this way. And if I can provide that for my son as well and that kind of lifestyle or try to encourage my wife uh, in that direction. Uh, I feel like that is almost a more honorable goal than just looking out for those individual feats of strength and endurance that I want to do. Yeah. That's a good uh, point because of, of how to, how to look at fitness as well for, you know, some people might think of fitness and working out as doing hard workouts and, and things like that. And that, that might be why some people are, fitness averse. And it's not always about beating yourself up in the gym. You know, sometimes if you do even half of that, but you focus on things outside of the gym and life and recovery and everything else, it'll pay dividends in the much longer, longer term, shorter term, everything. Because if people just throw themselves at, at fitness, then they might be likely to, to back off of it or, or just get sick of it or anything like that. But it's also, even if, even if people stick with training hard all the time, that's still only a small piece of the pie to, to be focusing on. Right. Yeah. And that's like yeah. with training for the, a very specific goal, like I am right now. Um, you know, I have a love for fitness and I think what you're talking about is a real big uh, motivator for me as well. Like my kids seeing it, my family being healthy. Um, and so what I'm doing right now in comparison is not really fun. You know what I mean? Like having to do the same type of training over and over again and doing just incremental increases and in gains and trying to stay focused on this boring programming essentially it's not fun stuff you know um but what is fun to me is um you know just fitness in general like that's really mm -hmm. fun to me i i don't uh, i go for these things because i think it's a great way to to push myself and like have a goal but ultimately i just enjoy the the act of doing it whether i'm fast slow strong weak i just enjoy doing it you know and i think once you get to that point which is it sounds like what, what you're doing you know it's it's easy. It's not this chore anymore, right? It's like the thing that you want to go do. And I think that's really important. Yeah. That's kind of been where you were asking me earlier, what kind of mindset shift has occurred, you know, at the beginning of this year, it was PR, PR, PR. And that's, and that's definitely part of the initial appeal. Like I'm seeing these gains, how far can I go? And, and there's still an aspect of that where I, I want to see just how far I can push my body. And I want to be able to make sure that I'm, I'm doing that in a healthy way, but I like to see like, what am I made of and how can I, it, is there something deeper that I just haven't quite gotten a hold of yet? Um, you know, there's that imaginary peak at some point and, you know, I'm not sure if that peak is before me or behind me, or maybe I'm right at it or, you know, and if all of the training that I didn't do when I was younger, how am I going to be able to, you know, more or less catch up to this imaginary graph uh, that I have in my mind. But, 
Uh, it's been less of that mindset that it was at the beginning of the year. And it's started to transition more into that, um, well, like you said in your book, daily over decades. How am I going to, you know, what's the long game, as many of the guys in the uh, Facebook group are saying? Like I'm in a thread right now um, in a group message with uh, people like uh, Chris Morgan and Darren Gaunt and uh, Mark Bishop, some of those other guys who uh, I really look up to in the group. And we're all talking about, well, how much of uh, Fit Week are we going to skip this this year and just focus on, you know, maybe trying to knock out that uh, Zone 2 10K in, in an hour. Uh, Mark came so close. I mean, within three minutes of it today. Um, and that's just, that's a whole nother kind of challenge because it's what is my body capable of, but instead of going after just PR after PR, how can I look into the future and say, I want to continue being able to do this kind of thing without just completely tearing my body down. That's a great way to look at it because there are great ways to tear your body down, but staying healthy in the process, I think is a bigger challenge that, uh, a lot of people don't realize, especially when you do, you're more interested in performance as opposed to just bicep curls and walking, you know? Yeah. I mean, that wouldn't hurt a little bit. I mean, I, I wouldn't mind a little bit of that. Uh, what did, uh, was it Joe that uh, said, uh, curls for the girls, I think on a podcast, uh, some the other ago. Joe, maybe, <laughs> I don't know. I thought it was you with your sexy Saturdays. It is. Oh, yeah. He's trying to. Oh, deny I definitely it. did sexy Saturday. I don't, <laughs> yeah. I don't know about curls, but I got my sexy Saturday in. Well, curls for your girl. I mean, we're not. Uh, yeah. There we go. I think I'm going to get the bicep blaster for Christmas. So. Uh, oh, yeah. I think it was uh, in regards to how hamstring is now bicep day because there's a bicep femoris yeah. part of the hamstring. That's right. That's right. Good job, so, son. The new bicep day. Well, yeah, cool, the new man. Bicep days. Let's get an update on some of these questions. See if any of your answers have changed. So what is okay. the hardest workout you've ever done? And has that changed? That has changed. Uh, so uh, previously, that was my very first um, 50K. And actually, I, I, after doing some uh, looking back upon it, it was a 55K. And it still ended up being far more than I expected just because uh, <laughs> they mismeasured the distance. I think that they uh, but, all these race organizers do it on purpose. It's like they they want that mental test. Spartan man. They're like, yeah, it's it's eleven miles, and you're like, well, it's seventeen, but that's close enough, you know? Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> so while that was my hardest, now the hardest uh, was one that I put myself through, and I actually organized was uh, so the Art Lobe Trail is in North Carolina. It goes from um, depending upon what direction, northbound, southbound, from Davidson River Campground in Pisgah Forest up to. Daniel Boone Boy Scout camp at the base of Cold Mountain. Yeah, the Cold Mountain from the movie, the book. Um, it's right at 30.1 miles, so just shy of a 50K. But it's got the direction we did it uh, on Black Friday of this year um, was 11,000 feet of elevation gain approximately, and then about 9,000 lost. Um, and that was that was tough. There were several places because there are road crossings for, you know, that I had planned out for an emergency ditch. If somebody got hurt, you know, locking up in my quads and just feeling, you know, I had two other guys with me, but they had no idea where they were going. They'd never been on the trail before. And I've done it several times, just hiking, uh, backpacking overnights. Um, I'd always done it in two days or three days and I'd never even contemplated doing it in one day until a couple of years ago, I saw some runners who said, Oh yeah, we're almost finished doing the whole thing. Well, now I got to do it. Um, and that was, that was the hardest because I, I challenged myself to do it. And I challenged some other people to come out and do it. And they're relying on me. And there's a part of me that says, I'm done. I am so tired. I'm ready to be finished with this, but I can't because not only for myself, but also for the individuals that I've pulled out here as well. And I see how hard they're working and, you know, we're playing off of that, but that was, while it was physically exhausting, that was probably one of the more mentally exhausting activities that I've done. And uh, I would probably say currently that's my hardest workout because it was just that tie in between the physical and the mental in a very new way. Um, yeah. So that's probably my new hardest workout. I think that's a great gauge for a hardest workout is where the Cause if, you know, if we only went off physical, it'd probably be like, what's the highest intensity you've done, but that's rarely what makes a fitness challenging. I think you, you met yourself there and you push forward, oh. which is awesome. 
a couple of times. Yeah. <laughs> All right. In your opinion, what's the best activity for building mental toughness and has that answer changed? So I'd said, um, solo backpacking. And I think that, um, just, uh, being, being alone with yourself, with your thoughts. I, I think that that's still, still a big part of it. You know, uh, um, as a, uh, as a Christian myself, I find that that is, uh, the time that I have the most introspection, the most time to, I mean, I've been out with the people of a variety of faiths where they, uh, they find that, that too, that just time in the woods. So whether it's a trail run or something, just getting out, especially if you're all by yourself, leave the music behind, uh, you know, don't focus on, on your heart rate, just exist. And that, uh, that will help you meet yourself in a, in a whole new way. So I didn't play music on that long run on the art Lowe trail at all. Every once in a while, we would talk to one another, but, um, you know, we might get something like, um, three, 400 yards away from each other. And there's, there was an hour or two where we're just completely by ourselves until we meet up to the next, uh, trail intersection where, we're like, okay, let's, uh, let's reconvene. Let's, uh, here's what we're going to plan out. And that definitely offered a lot of meeting myself, um, a lot of chance to increase that mental fortitude. Um, a lot of, uh, both uh, prayer and, um, um, meditation. So yeah, solo work. Awesome. Now, if you could have only one piece of equipment to train with for the rest of your life, what would it be? And has that answer changed? I've been thinking about that one. I know I said the rower last time and I still absolutely love the rower because I can do so many things with it that I can't do with anything else. I mean, I'm sure that I could find, I can pick up my son and lift him as weights or, uh, you know, uh, try to do something yard work related and, and get a different stimulus. So, so I think I'm probably for now going to stick with the rower, uh, just because it's, uh, such a unique piece of equipment. Um, though I did start to think about, uh, a bicycle, um, again, unique. Awesome. Is there anything you're planning on adding to your gym next on the list? Well, well I know I don't have any space for the donkey. Um, so, <laughs> uh, I have actually started working on, uh, most of my stuff I have to build until I can, you know, one of these days afford it. Like, uh, some of you, you guys can, but, uh, I'm working on, uh, building a, a DIY, um, uh, reverse hyper, uh, to go on my, uh, safety squat bars. Uh, so that would be something just kind of like a platform. And then I'll, I'll build the pendulum into that. I got to make it removable. So that's something I'm contemplating on. But as far as if I could just have anything, uh, I would probably go with a, uh, a bigger garage <laughs> so that I can put more stuff in it. Yeah. Uh, one of those true Makes form sense. runners would be nice, but, uh, I don't know. Awesome, man. Well, what is your best advice for all the garage gym athletes out there listening right now? Take a hard, long look at yourself. Uh, what are your goals? What are you, what are you wanting to accomplish? Not just today, not just this week or next month, but what are you hoping to accomplish 10, 15, 20 years down the road? What are you wanting to do and how can you accomplish those goals? Is fitness going to help you? Yes. Are you going to be able to get there all by yourself? Some people might be able to answer yes, but find those people who are going to walk alongside you and are going to be able to, to help you out because it's not just about you. Take, take the time to think about how your goals are going to affect those around you. Awesome, man. Well, Jeremy, it's been a, a blast having you on this second time and, you know, I'm sure it won't be the last time in all honesty, you're a very dedicated athlete, very committed, uh, love having you in the community and interacting. So I do appreciate that. And, uh, again, thanks for your time today. Thanks for being on the podcast, man. Absolutely. Y'all have a wonderful day and Merry Christmas. Thanks for listening to the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. If you want to learn more, go to garagegymathlete.com. You can learn about our training. Let us send you a copy of our book, The Garage Gym Athlete, or you can even get featured on the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. Thanks for listening.